A submersible vessel that takes tourists and researchers to the Titanic wreckage is missing in the Atlantic Ocean. Ocean Gate Expeditions, the company which runs the tour out of St. John, says they've lost communication with the sub. Here and now's Heather Gillis is standing by live with the latest. So Heather, what more can you tell us? Well, Carolyn, what we know right now is that the U.S. Coast Guard out of Boston is leading the search and rescue mission. The Canadian Coast Guard is also involved. They had a ship offshore and sent that to aid in the search, and the Canadian Forces has also sent an airplane to help in that search. Now, it's believed that the crew left here St. John's Harbor on Friday and that the sub was reported uh, missing on Sunday evening overdue by just a couple of hours, but so far no contact with that submarine, according to the company. Now, we've spoken with Misil Joe, who is the head of the Miakpakek First Nation Band, and they actually own a ship called the Polar Prince, and that towed the sub out to the Titanic wreckage site. And the Marine Institute also says that it had a student working with the company, with Ocean Gate. They say uh, in a statement that the student is on board the Polar Prince and that they are accounted for, which of course is some um, good news. For sure, Heather. Um, what have we heard from the company itself on this? Well, not much. They released a statement around lunchtime today, but it only had four bullet points. And in that statement, the company said that and confirmed that they lost contact with the sub, with the semi-submersible. And they're thanking all of the people who are involved in the search and who are helping the company try to, what they say, re-establish contact. Now they say they are mobilizing all options to bring their crew back safely and their entire focus is on the crew and their families. And we, we've been following along since Ocean Gate started offering these tours. Uh, CBC News was there when the head of the company gave a tour of the sub last year. So we're going to have a look at that video. And Heather, can you also tell us a bit more about these expeditions? Yes, absolutely. So take a look at that video and what you can see is My name is Stockton, Stockton Rush. Rush. I'm the CEO and founder of OceanGate. Let's take a look at Titan. Yeah, so you can see Stockton Rush there. He's giving a tour of Titan, and that's the sub that we believe is missing. It's a carbon fiber and titanium tube, and it was at the Marine Institute base in Holyrood in April, according to a tweet and video from the company. We don't have any official word about who was on board, how many people were on board, but according to the company's website, it can carry up to five people, one pilot, four crew, and it can dive up to 4,000 meters underwater. The company's website, this is important too, also says that it can carry up to 96 hours so that's four days worth of life support on board and it even has a toilet so the titanic wreckage as many people know off the coast of this province by about 380 nautical miles under about 3800 meters uh, of water now they ocean gate they do take tourists to see the titanic but it costs a pretty penny at about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per person and they use that money to uh fund their research into the decaying cruise liner. And I spoke with Larry Daly earlier today. He is a Titanic expert and he dove to the wreck of the Titanic about 20 years ago, actually almost 20 years to this day. Uh, he said it took four hours to reach the ocean floor when he did the dive back in 2003 because it's 2.5 miles underwater. And he did uh, a tour on a different sub but said there were a lot of safety protocols in place when he did that tour and he is remaining optimistic for those who are aboard the sub. I felt very safe. I still think it's very safe. Submersible diving is very safe. Um, you know, the, the, the thrust though of the Mariana Trench and I worked with uh, uh, Don Walsh, one of the gentlemen that was in that, it was a dual, uh, you know, uh, uh, team dove uh, for the Navy back in over 50 years ago and they dove the Mariana Trench which again it's 30 some odd thousand feet down and did that with old technology so like I said you know uh, we just keep positive and uh, you know hopefully the next few hours we get some good news. Now Daly also said Daly also says he knows people who are involved in the expedition, not necessarily on the sub, but people who may be uh, offshore on the ship. Now, it's also worthy to note that the U.S. Coast Guard, as we speak right now, is 
doing a news conference, uh, hopefully with an update and more information on this situation, which we should have for you a little later in the show. Reporting live for Here and Now, I'm Heather Gillis in St. John's. Well, Canadian Colin Taylor and his son took the tour last summer. He spoke with the CBC earlier this afternoon and had this to say. It's obviously incredibly troubling and, and worrying. Um, it, it is not for the faint-hearted to do something like this, to get in that sub. It's, it's very close quarters. You're in it for a long time. You're bolted in from the outside. There's no way out. There's no hatch to get out of it. Um, so you are, you are in that until someone gets you out of the water and unbolts. Uh, you know, unbolt you from that sub. It, it, what it is, is it's a carbon fiber tube, um, very, very, very thick carbon fiber tube with two titanium domes on either end. One of them has a porthole. Uh, and those titanium domes are opened to allow you to get in and then they're bolted shut from the outside. So once you're in, you're in. Uh, 